Shalom, shalom, dear brother and dear sister. Welcome to today's devotion. Today our question is, have you sold your birthright? Before each one can answer that question adequately, we need to have a common understanding of what we mean by birthright. A birthright is a particular right or possession or privilege a person has from birth. In most cases, culturally, the birthright belonged to the eldest son, although not always. But let's ask our first question. Is it possible for someone to lose their birthright? We are going to look at a few examples. The most famous example in the Bible is the story of Esau. This is what the Bible says in Genesis chapter 25 from verse 29 to 34. And Jacob boiled soup, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, I beg you, let me eat of the red, this red soup, for I am faint. Therefore his name was called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me your birthright today. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point of dying, and what profit shall this birthright be to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore to him, and he sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and soup of lentils, and he ate and drank, and rose up and went his way. And Esau despised his birthright. So we see that Esau came home hungry and found Jacob, his brother having made some soup. He asked for some of the soup, but Jacob enticed him to exchange it with his birthright. Esau agreed and thus despised his birthright, according to the Bible. <clears throat> In Hebrews 12, from verse 16 to 17, this is what is recorded concerning Esau. Verse 16, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. 17, For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he did not find any place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears, yeah, he tried, he, tr he cried and asked his father to bless him. But his, uh, his father had already blessed Jacob, because rightfully Jacob deserved the blessing of the firstborn, because Esau had sold it. Esau regretted selling his birthright, and he could not get it back. So Jacob received the blessing of the firstborn from the father Isaac, which was meant for Esau. Let's look at one more example, which may not be as clear as the case of Esau. In Genesis chapter 3, we read of how the serpent, alias the devil, deceived Eve to eat the fruit of the forbidden tree in the garden of Eden. Eve later gave to Adam, who also ate. This is what God said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will bear children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Verse 17. To Adam he said, Because you have listened to your wife's voice and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. The ground is cursed for your sake. You will eat from it with much labor all the days of your life. And then we see in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 to 24, Yahweh, God, said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now, lest he reach out his hand and also take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Yahweh God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. In these passages, we see how Adam and Eve lost some privileges or rights. They were chased away from the garden of Eden which was paradise. 
They lost access to the tree of life, which could have enabled them to live forever. From now on, Adam was to toil for his family's livelihood, and Eve was to undergo pain during childbirth. God had given Adam and Eve certain rights after creating them, or as it were, birthing them into this world. No one could take these rights away. However, due to their disobedience to God and obedience to Satan, they lost their birthright to live forever with all the benefits of living in communion with God. Because God had told them that the day they eat of that fruit, they, the fruit of the, of the tree uh, of the knowledge of good and evil, they would surely die. So now we see that it is possible for someone to lose their birthright. But how does this apply to Christians in our time? Jesus Christ said that we must be born again to inherit or enter into the kingdom of God. We read in John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered and said to him, this was Nicodemus, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God or he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Being born again entails accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That means accepting him as a son of the living God, Yahweh, and that he died on the cross in our place to take the punishment that was meant for all of us due to the original sin of Adam and Eve. You see, when Adam and Eve lost their birthright, we also lost it as we are their descendants. Jesus Christ came to restore our birthright and peace with God. Yes, that we may be reconciled with God and that we may now call him God our Father. Our birthright includes eternal life in the kingdom of God with all the other rights that pertain thereof or that are associated with being in the kingdom of God. In John 3.16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but will have eternal life. Once you accept Jesus Christ, you have eternal life with him as your birthright. Now, the question you may ask is, is it possible to, le to lose this birthright? Yes, we've covered what the birthright is and how some people lost their birthright. But now we're asking for Christians, is it possible to lose their birthright? We've seen how Esau lost his birthright for one meal. We've also seen how Adam and Eve lost their birthright through disobedience. Jesus asked a rhetorical question in Mark 3, 8. In Mark 8, 36, he asked, What shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lost his own soul? In pursuit of worldly wealth and other pleasures, it is possible for a Christian to be compromised and to lose his or her birthright. Let us look at the traps the devil uses to ensnare Christians. We are going to read 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. This is what it says. Don't love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Father's love isn't in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life isn't the Father's, but is the world's. The world is passing away with its lust, but he who does God's will remains forever or abides forever. The devil has three categories of temptations from time immemorial to cause or to lure believers away from the kingdom of God. An example of the lust of the flesh is sexual sin, such as adultery and fornication. There are other, many other types of sexual sin. An example of the last of the eyes, which is also called covetousness, is greed or avarice. Wanting everything your eye sees for the sake of having it, whether you need it or not. The pride of life is associated with self-glory when you idolize yourself and your achievements. Like the rich fall in Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 21. Yes, he forgot God. He did not glorify God. He idolized himself and his life was taken away. 
Now, back to the question, have you sold your birthright? This is a question we had from the beginning. Let's look at some ways Christians have sold their birthright or are likely to sell their birthright. When they compromise to get jobs or get promotions, for example, through bribery or sexual sin. When they compromise in business, for example, doing business that doesn't glorify God, for example, running brothels and bars, etc. When they get well through crooked means, for example, cheating people or grabbing property from the poor or weak through their positions of influence or wealth. And when they conform to the world, the systems of this world, the thinking of this world, by behaving in an ungodly way, for example, having a speech full of cursing and abuses or lies, and when they live in bitterness and forgiveness, and so many more. In case any of this describes you, it is necessary to repent and ask God for forgiveness and for restoration. If you've robbed people of their property, then return it to them. Here are some guidelines to safeguarding your birthright by the grace of God. Let's read Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 14 to 15. It says, Pursue peace with everyone as well as holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up and causes you trouble or many of you will become defiled. So, in our relationships with other people, we advise to pursue peace and holiness and not to be bitter with anyone. Then in Romans 12, verse 1 and 2, we are told, Therefore I urge you, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is a good, well-pleasing and perfect will of God. So in our conduct, we advised first to present our bodies to God as a living sacrifice that is holy. Secondly, to think of what is good and fully pleasing to God in his perfect will and not to think according to what is considered the norm by worldly standards. Then finally, we are told in Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, let's also see that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let's run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter or completer of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So in our journey of faith in this life, we are to lay aside any sin that so easily traps us, and we are to run our race with endurance, focusing on Jesus Christ and relying on him to see us through to eternity. So in this short devotion, we have seen that in order to safeguard our birthright, here is a summary. First, pursue peace and holiness and, not do, and do not be bitter with anyone. Secondly, present your body to God as a living sacrifice that is holy. And thirdly, think of what is good and fully pleasing to God in his perfect will and do not conform to what is considered the norm by worldly standards. And fourthly, lay aside any sin that so easily traps you and that so that you may run your race with endurance, endurance focusing on Jesus Christ. So, my dear brother, my dear sister, I conclude with this Hebrews 10, 35 to 36. So don't lose your confidence since it holds a great reward for you. So that means be confident in your faith in God. For you need endurance or perseverance so that after you've done God's will, you can receive what he has promised. That is according to the ISV. So till next time, it's shalom, shalom, my dear brother and my dear sister. Amen.
Dear friend, would you like to invite Jesus into your life? You can say with me this prayer. It's based from Romans 10, verse 9 to 10, and other verses. Say this. Let's say it together. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of the true living God. I believe that you died on the cross to save me. I believe that you rose from the dead and went to be with the Father in heaven. And now welcome you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. If you've said that prayer with me, look for a Bible-believing church that is near you. And may God bless you. You can also reach us at the Facebook page, which is there at the bottom of this page. May God lead you in his paths, in his ways. May God preserve you until the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to take us to be with him forever and ever. Amen.